Hi. Um, I'm going to share a dream with you that I had last night because I don't think I've... And I haven't processed all of this. It may be a little premature to share, but I think there's a couple people who can interpret it for us. Uh, if there's even anything to interpret. Um, I've only had a couple rapture dreams in my life. Uh, this would be the third. Anyway... Um, in the dream, and it's short, I suddenly had in my hands a bottle, or it was before me, it was like a bottle of wine, a big bottle, and it had my name on it, and my name, my last name, the letters were shining, and I casually said, oh, it's the cup of salvation, I'll, I'll drink of the cup of salvation, something like that. Either either I said, oh, it's the cup of salvation, or I'll drink of the cup of salvation. So I took a drink, just a small sip, and immediately I was awake in my bed this morning. Totally. It was, it was like I was filled with the Spirit, but it felt different than I've ever felt before. It was electrified. I was electrified. My whole body was electrified. Almost like I couldn't contain it. And I was aware of my surroundings. I saw my closet and uh, I was like, this is it. This is it. This is the rapture. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe it. And then um, my wife to the left of me was asleep still and uh, I know I took note of that you know and um, there was a part of me that was like scared so I was surprised I'm surprised at that looking back that there was a part of me that was scared this is it this is it I I think I felt like I was being lifted up like I knew that this was it. This is the rapture. And I was wide awake. I, this was not while I was sleeping. And I was still had the whole, my whole feeling of being electrified. Uh, and then it all dissipated. And when I looked at the clock, and I could, it was either 5.50 or 5.55. Uh, my eyes are foggy in the mornings. It's like blurry. So, uh, there's some grace numbers there, but, um, I don't have much to interpret other than I don't understand why there was kind of a feeling of, I don't know, just fe I don't know if it was fear or like, I guess I just, I had this feeling, I knew it was the rapture, and I knew that things were about to change so dramatically, and I was about to be launched into eternity, and the whole thing was so awesome that it scared me. I don't believe that when it really happens, we're going to have fear. Um, it could That could just be my flesh reacting, you know. Uh, I don't know. The only other interpretive piece is that the wine bottle had my name on it and at first I thought oh he made something for me you know um, it's personalized but number one it was my last name which is I know every name in heaven is under heaven is given to you by the father but I was adopted so that was my adoptive parents name and also, I just look at the last name as part of the natural man. You know, I, I don't know. I, maybe that's just me overthinking it. Um, but the other thing is, is that the wine had my name on it. And it, like I said, first I thought, see, one part is I'm clear. I'm not clear about is did he was was I holding the bottle or did I reach out and grab it? I'm not sure. Was it being offered to me, or did was I already holding it? And then I think, okay, so it had my name on it. That means that it was my vineyard. It was produced from me. Uh, 
And I'm not talking about my flesh. I'm talking about something, something the way the Lord's salvation works. That the life that's in us is going to become wine. It, and oil and wine go together, right? And I'm thinking about the parable of the virgins, which I technically don't believe is strictly applicable to the church. I believe the virgins are the bridesmaids versus the bride who's not actually in the parable because she's a mystery not yet revealed. However, I can't be dogmatic about that because it's a parable, so it can apply to many different things. Uh, it can be applied in different ways. So, and... I would have been more dogmatic about it in the past, but a few things lately have made me say, okay, you, you got to be a little, it's a parable, it's not a doctrinal explanation. Um, but, sorry, I haven't had coffee yet, I'm really scattered. Uh, you know, those foolish virgins did not have oil, and the wise did have oil. And the oil and the wine go together. And, and what I got, I mean, just the phrase, the oil becomes the wine. I don't know. I guess so. Olive oil, you know, I, I don't know much about fermentation and all that, but I know that they stomp on the olives and that makes the oil and then the oil is fermented, I guess, and that becomes a point. Anyway, the bottle, I think, came from in me. You know, some people, because of the imagery of Matthew 24, they talk about angels gathering us to be brought to the Lord, but... I always, based on what I understand of organic salvation from Paul, our transfiguration is by the working of his power within us. It's resurrection. Um, and that Philippians says that he's going to transfigure the body of our humiliation, making it like the body of his glory by the power uh, working in us by which he's able to subdue all things to himself. That's resurrection power. And Romans 8 talks about how we're going to be clothed with life. And uh, it's he, his spirit dwells in us. He who raised Christ from the dead, if his spirit dwells in us, he'll also give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in us. That spirit is the oil. And it's going to become a bottle of wine that we're going to drink to get out of here. That wine is our cup of salvation. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, anyway, you know, I don't know. I guess it was a foretaste, uh, a dress rehearsal kind of thing. Wonder if anybody else has had that dream or felt like that. All right, talk to you later.